Necrotizing periodontal diseases. So there are three types of necrotizing periodontal diseases. And we're going to look at each of these um, sections. And we're also going to look at an image or a picture of an example of a necrotizing uh, periodontal disease. So the first thing we need to examine is this word over here, necrotizing. What does that word mean? Well, necrotizing comes from the word necrosis. And necrosis is basically a um, term that... Uh, is defined as tissue death. So something is dying. The tissues are dying. So when we look at necrotizing gingivitis or NG, what does that mean? That means that the gum or the gingival tissues is dying. So let's look at this example here. Here are examples of necrotizing gingivitis. Here, because it's gingivitis, there's no bone loss. So we don't really see a lot of, we don't see any recession actually. And we see inflammation, we would see bleeding, and the tissues in the gums uh, may not be as evident, but it, it there is necrosis. The tissues are dying. Sometimes it's hard to tell with um, these images because it doesn't look as if the gums have disappeared or have or have been eaten away because necrosis means that the gums have been eaten away and we don't necessarily see uh, much of it but there is uh there's definite pain involved so with people who have with patients who have necrotizing gingivitis their number one complaint would be pain and if someone tells you they have pain and they have severe bleeding severe inflammation it probably could be necrotizing gingivitis and the reason why we would uh, rule out periodontitis is because in these situations, there's no bone loss. Because with gingivitis, there is no bone loss, nor do we see any recession, right? But if we look at the other one, necrotizing periodontitis, this is necrosis, this is tissue death of what? Of the gums, of the PDLs, of the bone. And we can see that here. So if we look at this image here, necrotizing periodontitis, look at how the papilla has been punched out or cratered out, is scooped up. The, the papilla is dying. Um, you can see that over here. There's definite tissue death happening. Lots and lots of bleeding. And again, the number one complaint is pain. With all the other conditions, with all the other periodontal conditions, pain is not a number one concern. But when someone tells you they're in pain and they probably even have a fever, um, swollen lymph nodes, that's a sign that this person could be suffering from necrotizing diseases. And in this case, it's necrotizing periodontitis. You see this gray um, membrane that's over here? You could actually wipe it off. And this gray-white membrane is known as a pseudomembrane. And this is a very typical uh, thing that you would find in patients that have necrotizing diseases. So this is an example of a pseudomembrane, which we'll look at in another slide. The last and most severe type of uh, necrotizing periodontal disease is necrotizing stomatitis. And this is severe. This is, and it actually says here, severe necrosis, severe death, um, tissue death. And when we're looking at an example of this, we're like, this is like the, the worst case you can see. And we, let's look at this picture. Look at that. The gums are gone. The gums are dying. The bone could even be dying. It's significant. It's severe. So when we're looking at necrotizing stomatitis, we're looking at tissue death severe necrosis past the gums, past, like it could even be uh, the tongue that could be involved. It could be the cheeks that could be involved. It could even be the palate. And that's the example we were looking at. And bone can also be resorbed. So it's the most severe and the rarest, so it's not common at all, uh, type of necrotizing periodontal disease. So here is necrotizing stomatitis. And if you look at this person's palate, you can definitely see tissue death. Necrotizing periodontal diseases have other words such as trench mouth. This is common in soldiers in World War I. So in World War I, these soldiers, this typically happens with young people. So these young male soldiers had undergone severe trauma, severe stress. And that's what usually happens when you're under severe stress, you could get necrotizing periodontal diseases. And at that time, they called it trench mouth. Vincent infection, a nug. Um, necrotizing ulcerative gingival stomatitis, those are all different terminology to mean the same thing. Remember, the main um, symptom that the client will tell you is that it's very painful. All the other symptoms, all the other periodontal disease, there is no pain. But with this one, there is pain, there is tissue necrosis, there's tissue death, and the tissues are like so red and it just bleeds spontaneously. It just bleeds just like that. Sometimes you don't even touch it and you see bleeding. 
and the um, amount of tissue death can happen so quickly like within days you can see the tissue uh, dying so it is quite severe remember the pseudo membrane that i was talking about that's what this is referring to it's like a gray layer of tissue and it covers like the dying areas the necrotic areas or the dying areas of the gum and if you look at the papilla it looks kind of cratered or punched out like scooped out like there's no papilla here and that's typical of necrotizing periodontal diseases sometimes you don't see any papilla um, you'll see a lot of plaque, you'll see a lot of blood, you might see um, sometimes uh, a lot of saliva with uh, a strong smell. And again, pain is your number one indicator. They, they won't eat, they won't brush their teeth because they're in just immense pain. And even if you palpate their lymph nodes, you'll notice that they do have swollen submandibular, which is like right here, submandibular lymph nodes, and even cervical lymph nodes. So you, if you palpate it, it would be, it would be swollen and possibly even tender and of course they would have they could have uh, a fever they would just feel tired and just they can't eat because it's in they're in so much pain so things we should um keep in mind again again here we see some more images of cratered or necrotic papilla where papilla is just being scooped out or here we can see like the the gums have just been um it's like the tissues are just dying in the gums so what causes necrotizing periodontal disease? Well, you could have a poor um, host immune response or your immune response is, is not um, as strong. And, and why could this happen? Well, remember we said, we talked about stress earlier where those um, soldiers in World War I experienced it a lot because they were going through so much emotional stress. Um, it can even happen to students. We do see it with the young students who are going through a lot of stress when they're in college or university. And then um, alcohol, smoking, that all um, plays a big role. Typically, they've noticed that it happens with Caucasian people, people who usually eat um, or have poor nutrition or poor eating habits, just like college students. And the age that they've noticed is 22 to 24 years old um, people that usually get it. So if you have a client that has necrotizing periodontal um, disease, you could re definitely um, refer them to a periodontist. You can also teach them, um, you know, tr to try to eat. Um, and what we say is just because they can't eat because it's so painful, at least take Ensure or boost so that they can get a dietary replacement. At least that way they're getting their nutrients in. At least that way they're getting their vitamins and minerals inside. In, in them and then if they're smoking we really need to um educate them on like stopping to smoke because that can trigger it a lot more all right so that is necrotizing periodontal disease for you guys